What's going on, moviegoers? So if you're new to the channel, my name is Christian. Welcome to Zero Productions. Boy, oh boy, you guys, Variety really sent the heat-seeking missile with a new report from this article. This is just all kinds of bad news. And I want to start off by saying this. I am truly blessed, and everybody else who really got to experience the Infinity Saga in its prime time. Because the MCU right now is in shambles. It is so disconnected. Nobody knows what is going to happen with the future of these beloved Marvel characters. But it is wildly concerning coming from a hardcore fan, especially if you've been following this shit from the very beginning. And I'm not even talking about phase one. I'm talking about watching Blade in the 90s. I'm talking about watching those earlier X-Men and Fantastic Four films and the Spider-Man movies. You know, it's it's so disconcerting. I don't know what is going on right now, but as a fan, I am in just disbelief because never in my, you know, 32 years of life, I, I would think that the MCU would be struggling so bad, especially after the end game. I mean, it's, it's wildly, wildly, you guys, concerning. But we're going to talk about all these massive reports and all these stories coming about certain projects and certain actors in the MCU, starting off with Jonathan Majors. Now, apparently Marvel and a bunch of executives have gotten together discussing some plans with what to do with Kang the Conqueror and Jonathan Majors. It, it looks like they are highly considering recasting for the role for Kang the Conqueror, or if not, replacing him with another big bad, that being Dr. Doom, which you guys, I feel like is a massive stretch. You can't just throw in Doom so quickly. It's a buildup for Dr. Doom. I mean, you haven't even introduced your Fantastic Four. So I think that is a bad, bad idea to kind of, you know, be like, hey, we're going to get rid of Kang because of this whole Jonathan Major situation, which is court date is this month. But it, it's not looking good. It's not looking good, especially, uh, you know, the reports saying that somebody has saw the finale of Loki season two. And apparently it sets up Kang even more. And they're like, well, Marvel's effed. What are they going to do if they decide to recast or replace Kang the Conqueror, who is supposed to be your big bad villain in Avengers of Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars? I mean, it, it is it is in shambles. I don't know what's going to happen, you guys. Innocent until proven guilty. I, I know a lot of fans and a lot of people are waiting the, you know, the trial this month and, you know, we're curious to see what's going to happen with Jonathan Majors. Apparently, you know, his his Oscar worthy movie has been canceled and it has no release date. So it's it's looking bad for Jonathan Majors, man. I don't think he's going to ever bounce back from this, especially if the trial goes not in his favor. It is going to be bad. All kinds of bad, you guys. But don't get me wrong. I would love to see, you know, Dr. Doom. I just I want it done right. I want it flushed out right it's a build up for this character he's not just your any old villain you know what i'm saying he's like a thanos thanos was a build up to uh, you know avengers infinity war and endgame you know let ryan krugler handle dr doom black panther 3 whatever they need to do but let ryan krugler handle dr doom i think he would be a phenomenal option to really bring this character to life but who knows if he's going to appear in the fantastic four movie it's going to be interesting to see what happens but Moving on to the next topic, you guys. Apparently, you know, Marvel's flirting around with the idea of bringing back some of the original Avengers like Downey's Iron Man and Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. Are you that desperate that you have to bring back these beloved characters who served their purpose in the Infinity Saga, who had a great farewell just to make a buck? I hate that idea. I hate it. Maybe for Secret Wars, you can bring back a variant of like Downey's Iron Man but just to bring them back, just to be like, hey, you know, we need you guys back to, you know, kind of, you know, get us back on track, right? I hate that idea. It makes them look so desperate. Now, I bet, you know, Downey and Scarlett Johansson are indebted to Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige. But I think, I think it's a bad idea. I think it's, it's, it's terrible. It, it, like I said, it makes them look entirely desperate for a win. Because right now, it's been losses after losses after losses. You know, and a lot of people are concerned for the Marvels, which comes out in two weeks that, you know, a bunch of people don't even know about, you know, so I don't know. To bring back, you know, some of the original Coral Avengers is just way too soon and it's not going to serve its purpose. And a lot of fans are going to feel like just kind of cheated from the deaths of, you know, Natasha Romanoff and Tony Stark. So I do think that it is entirely a bad idea to bring back the hardcore Avengers, you know, the original core 
you know, that really established the MCU off of a desperate move because of Marvel and their, their struggles with creativity, their struggles with breaking these characters, these struggles with stories. It's just been a massive struggle for Phase 4 and Phase 5. I mean, like I said, there have been some kind of hits, but ultimately, you guys, a lot of people feel kind of war, well, like worn down with the MCU. And I'm not going to lie, including myself. I, it's just the love isn't there anymore. It's not. Like, it's not like I, I was like so hyped for Infinity War. Like there's just no hype evolving around, you know, phases four or five in this whole multiverse saga. Yeah, there's certain projects that I'm excited for. But, you know, it's just I it, it feel like it's going through the stages of what D, the DCU has been going through and the struggle that they've been going through since Man of Steel. Now it's hitting Marvel and it's super, super unfortunate. Moving on to the next topic. This one, you guys, is a massive one. Apparently, Mahershala Ali was ready to walk away from the table because of the script rewrites and just the bad, bad press that Blade is getting. You know, the the, the all the different writers who've come on and, you know, the creative minds and the, the, the directors and the film being postponed. He was casted as Blade so many years ago. It looks like it was, what, like four years ago he was casted for Blade? It is crazy to me that this, this film hasn't gotten off the floor. No script is done. Nothing. Nothing. But apparently they hired the writer for Logan to tap, you know, the, the a whole fresh new screenplay, a whole script for Blade. And it's looking for a release date of 2025. You know, like, I love Logan. I thought Logan was a phenomenal film. One of my top favorite comic book movies. You know, if the writer can really come in and give us a grittier, darker, R-rated Blade, because that's what we need. You're trying to establish this character in the MCU, being in the world of PG-13 and all these other, you know, soft-hearted characters. It's not going to work. It's not. Marvel, stop playing it safe. Stop. It, it's just, what are you doing? The character works well when it's R-rated. We're dealing with ghouls and monsters and vampires. Come on. And you have Mahersha Ali, who, honestly, who's, who's been a phenomenal actor his entire career. And after the Green Book, he's been snubbed because he's been attached to this toxic role. And he can't move on. When's the last Mahershala Ali movie we saw? You know how many uh, Oscar-worthy roles he's probably passed out on? He skipped on because, you know, he's been attached to this shambles of a movie called Blade? It's, I, I, I feel his frustration. And if I'm being honest with you, if I'm Mahershala Ali, I'm walking. It's been four years and we're still struggling to bring this character to life. And he is not getting any younger. Yeah, black don't crack. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, he's pushing. He's, oh, he's going to be well into his 50s by the time he's ready to play Blade? Come on. What are we doing here? Kevin Feige, you bit off more than you can chew. And it's making you look bad. You've been the top dog for how many years now? It's making you look bad. You know? So if I'm a Hershaw Lee, I'm walking away. I'm walking away and, you know... I'm moving on and Marvel can figure out the whole Blade situation or scrap it, do whatever they need to do. But apparently the budget is going to be modest. I think, what is it, less than $100 million for the budget? I was like, okay, well, that's a good thing. You don't need to balloon up like a $250 million movie like the Marvels. <laughs> you know, you have a much smaller scale budget. You really have a, a, a plushed out and well thought script with characters and, you know, great action sequences. Great set pieces. You know, look at the first Blade. It was phenomenal. And honestly, I don't think that this up and coming new Blade with, with, with Mahershala Ali can even stand on its two feet with the original Blade movie. No, there's no way. There's no way. Especially if you're giving me a PG-13 rating. It's not happening. It's just, it's, it's not going to happen. And it's, it's really unfortunate to say that because, like I said, when Mahershala Ali was casted as Blade, I was so hyped. Seeing him on, you know, Hall H and walking out with the Blade hat. Like, that shit was dope. I was like, oh, man, we got Mahershala Ali to play Blade. This is going to be phenomenal. But it's, 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 it's not looking well. It is not looking well. And like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at him if he decided to just completely step away and walk away from the project. But speaking about the Marvels, you guys, apparently the budget for the Marvels is around $250 million. $250 million for two Disney Plus characters coming to the screen for the first time that people don't even know about. That is the struggle with the Marvels and the marketing team. It is so concerning. And not only that, you guys, the director, Nia DaCosta, apparently had stepped away to work on another film starring Tessa Thompson, still in post-production for the Marvels. 
What are you doing? Now, I know different directors have done this, but you are completely stepping away, moving to London from a completely different studio to work on another movie when your movie is still coming out. That lets me know that these directors really don't have the pull that they, they think they have. You know, you sign up for these big blockbuster movies, but at the end of the day, you're just there, your, your, your spreadsheet, your name on the paper. That's what it really seems like. Because if you're walking away from a $250 million movie to go work on another movie, when apparently some of the screenings for the Marvels didn't test well, what are you doing? Your main focus should be on your $250 million, your $250 million movie. That should be your main focus. Why are you stepping away working on something else? You don't have this movie in the bag. It's not testing positive. So what are we doing here? You know, look, I, if the Marvels fails and the Marvels doesn't do well, oh well, oh well. Like I have no more sympathy towards, you know, these mediocre, boring, generic comic book films anymore. No excuses. I mean, look at the Batman. It was such an artistic film. It was phenomenal. Or Joaquin Phoenix's Joker phenomenal or Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 filled with so much heart and character you know why are we still getting these bland comic book movies we have to step away from this and we have to call out the mediocre stuff that they are putting out because if we don't guess what it is going to continue to be that way and they're going to continue to struggle at the box office non-stop Marvel's just tracking to be the lowest you know opening weekend you know post pandemic and that's for a reason Man, y'all, this is just crazy. So many topics in this this article from Variety, you guys. It's just it's just too juicy not to talk about. But post your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about the topics we discussed in today's video. Please, thoughts and opinions. Let me hear it. What do you guys think? Please, post your comments down below. Please.